What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today we move on with our loadout meta-analyses for Operation Burnt Horizon by taking a closer look at the primary weapons of Tori Talio F... Ferris? Fair Use? Firus? <laughs> Okay, uh, gridlock, let's just go with that. Do we finally have an operator where there is a true balance between her LMG and assault rifle? Let's go and find out. Gridlock brings with her two familiar weapons, the M249 Saw, very similar to Capital's setup, and the F90, which is the Australian variant of the Steyr Org and therefore closely related to Kaid and IQ's guns. The overview looks promising with strengths and weaknesses on both sides but the only way to truly understand how these guns compare to each other is to dive into the stats one by one. As expected, the hefty LMG packs a bit more of a punch when it comes to damage per shot, although of course in real life both guns fire the exact same ammunition and they should therefore perform very similarly, but we accept these in-game stats for the sake of balancing. The M249 also comes with the customary 5 meters extra drop off range of the LMG class, but I would challenge you to find areas in Rainbow Six where you will actually be fighting at more than 35 meters. As fully automatic attacker primaries go, 48 points is the hardest hitting damage per shot you will find and 38 is right down there amongst the weakest guns of the group. It's interesting to see such a significant diversion between the guns, so let's see how this plays out once we factor in some of the other stats. The fire rate advantage goes to the F90 and, as is my habit, I double checked the fire rates of all of the new guns in Burnt Horizon and even though the F90 has a listed fire rate of 740 RPM, the actual time it takes to dump a full mag in-game is consistently between 2.3 and 2.316 seconds and if we run that through our trusty formula for fire rates, we end up with a measured fire rate of 780 RPM instead for that, we actually get to shoot a little faster than intended. And that's maybe a good thing because once we combine the damage and fire rate stats to calculate the damage per second, the M249 is still the winner at all ranges despite the elevated fire rate of the F90. 520 DPS is pretty much par for the course amongst the LMG class, although it is still slightly lower than the 536 average of the assault rifles. 494 DPS is underwhelming already, basically the exact same as Ash's G36C, and that is with the elevated fire rate. If we use the listed fire rate of 740 RPM for our calculations instead, the close range DPS goes all the way down to 469, which is one of the lowest for all attacker primaries. It's lower than the DPS of Blackbeard's abysmal Mark 17 CQB and even lower than Nomad's AK-74M. In fact, the only assault rifle that puts out less damage per second is Finker's Spear .308. But let's put the in-game stats aside for now, we know that the actual fire rate is 780 and while that still leaves the gun amongst the weaker rifles out there, it's not quite the absolute bottom of the barrel. What do the damage and fire rate stats mean in practice? Well, at close range, the M249 will get away with one less bullet to down or kill in three quarters of our armor type and strike location permutations. At longer ranges, this advantage becomes even more apparent with the saw needing an average of two bullets less. This translates into times to down or kill that are on average better for the machine gun at all ranges, although there are a couple of cases at close ranges where the F90 comes out on top. Nevertheless, the bottom line for combat effectiveness purely from a damage perspective is that Gridlock's LMG is the more effective weapon all round, but of course we cannot discount the effect that the further stats might have on our conclusions. Gridlock's setup for her M249 differs from Capital's in that she prefers to use a 60 round high capacity mag in her gun as opposed to the belts we've been used to up until now. And that's still double the capacity of most attacker weapons including the F90. In Rainbow Six Siege the reload times for guns tend to be inversely correlated to their capacities, so the more bullets you have the longer the reload tends to be and this principle also holds true for Gridlock. 
The F90's 3.1 second reload time from empty and 2.2 second tactical are both below average compared to the assault rifles 3.3 and 2.5 seconds and that again is a good thing considering how underwhelming this gun is looking so far. 4.5 and 3.3 seconds are of course borderline appalling in comparison to the rifle stats but compared to the 7.6 seconds that Capitao needs to stick a fresh belt into his M249, these reload times are still pretty good. The aim down sight time for the F90 is the standard 450 milliseconds for rifles and there is no option of lowering this time with an angled grip. That is all 100% par for the course but the 500 millisecond ADS time for the saw is quite interesting. Historically in Siege, the one greatest weakness for the LMG class used to be the time it took to aim with them, especially when coming up against defenders who usually only need 300 milliseconds to aim their primary weapons. And even after a recent buff, I have measured all other LMGs in the game at either 550 or 600 milliseconds, so it's interesting to see a new stat. Undoubtedly, the lower than usual time to aim is down to Gridlock's beefy arms. For her, an M249 is pretty much a toy, and the only thing stopping her from whipping that gun up even faster is the fear of accidentally crushing it in the process. With a time that is only 50 milliseconds slower than the rifle's ADS time, we are now at a point where this one Achilles heel for the LMGs is no longer that much of a problem, at least not for gridlock. So at this stage, things are still looking good for the M249 saw. The hipfire spread when stationary, that is standing, kneeling, or prone, is virtually identical between the two guns and only once you start jogging, shooting at full auto, or jogging while shooting at full auto does the F90 begin to show superior stats. We'll call this a small victory for the F90 here. Finally, let's consider the controllability and optimal setup of the two weapons here. The saw has both significant first shot recoil as well as a sizable random spread over time and you only have a choice of two different muzzle attachments to help you deal with this. If you tend to fire short bursts, the first shot recoil reduction of the flash hider will offer you the most benefit. If you're going to be firing really long bursts, then it might be worth going for the compensator instead and putting up with the initial vertical jump after the first shot, but getting less spread over time. I tested both in practice and we'll get to that in a bit. The F90 has a first shot recoil that is just about as aggressive as that of the M249 and even though the random spread throughout the burst is not as strong, the gun does have a distinct tendency to wander off to the right over time. The compensator will help a bit with straightening out the recoil but that will leave a nasty jump after the first shot so I personally will not be using this attachment. The choice then comes down to the muzzle brake which will perfectly smooth out the first shot recoil or the flash hider which will help with the first shot a bit and then also improve the random spread over time. I guess it comes down to the short versus long burst argument. For short bursts, definitely take the muzzle brake without a doubt, but if you're going to be spraying out your ammo half a mag at a time, then maybe the flash hider could be the optimal choice for you. I think the muzzle brake will do it for me here and as promised here is the four way comparison between the M249 with compensator or flash hider and the F90 with muzzle brake or flash hider. Make of this test what you will, it is of course not objective in any way but for me both guns felt very controllable but the M249 was maybe just that little bit easier to keep on target. But that's maybe due to its slower fire rate. For both guns the attachments behaved as predicted and for now I will be running the compensator on the saw to give me that long burst control and the muzzle brake on the F90 because of the control it offers at the beginning of each burst. One last thing to mention before we conclude is that unlike Capitao's M249, the saw does not get the shotgun-like breaching capability in Terrorist Hunt. I tested both guns in the current build of the game and Capitao can still absolutely shred through walls while Gridlock just makes puny little holes like every other operator. But that is a really minor note. Conclusion time, which gun is better if you're trying to give yourself the best chance of winning your gunfights while playing gridlock, the M249 saw or the F90? Each gun has its strengths and weaknesses and the simple fact is that the saw is probably the best machine gun in the game right now while the F90 is definitely below average when compared to the rest of the rifles.
The M249 does more damage and will down opponents quicker in most situations whether you're landing body or leg shots, it comes with double the capacity and is very controllable at the expense of slightly lower reload and ADS times, but those advantages of the F90 are pretty minor in my opinion. The only significant advantage that I would credit the F90 with is the higher fire rate which can make landing headshots just that little bit easier. Taking everything into account, I would actually say that the saw could offer the greater comfort and ease of use. Of course, if you have thousands of hours in the game and you get most of your kills via headshots, the added damage of the LMG might not be that important, but for most players I would say that this gun is more forgiving and could well end up being the better choice. What are your thoughts on these guns so far and which do you prefer? Leave your comments below and while you're there feel free to leave a like if you think that you got some useful info out of this video or dislike if not. And with that as always thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.